Okay, so let's take a look at question number three here and see if we can generate an equation, a set of systems of equations to optimize this problem. So we have a sales going on here where we're selling hot dogs and hamburgers um, and we're given the prices for each one. We're also given a total amount of sales um, that we're expected to make and we're also given uh, some relationship about how many um, hot dogs are being sold as compared to hamburgers. So the first thing we would do here is let's just, let's just define our variables. So we can say x is equal to the number of hot dogs. Okay, and remember that's a count of values. And then we can say y is equal to the number of hamburgers. Okay, so straight, simple um, two variables there. Are there any restrictions on the variables? So when we're selling things, okay, what we can't have are negative values. Okay, so a simple way to, um, to constrain the set of values is that both X and Y have to be members or, or sets, a member of the set of whole numbers. Okay, so if you remember that um, X, uh, remember what whole numbers are, I'll just put them in a set here. They start at zero and go one, two, three, and so on. Okay, so we're basically saying that we cannot include any negative integers in this in this value. Another way we could say is that both x and y okay, are the set of integers, okay, but there is a restriction that x has to be greater than or equal to zero and y would have to be greater than or equal to zero. And again, that would be the equivalent to what we have above. So either way is how we could exp explain that mathematically. Um, and again, if you had trouble trying to figure that out, you can just reason it out and you could just write it out in words, but this would be the, the preferred way of showing that. Then the next thing we have to do is develop a system of linear inequalities. So one of the hints is given in the last sentence. He expects to sell at least twice as many hot dogs as hamburgers. So we have X for hot dogs and we have Y for hamburgers. And the relationship for that is that the hot dogs are always two times the size of the hamburgers in terms of numbers of sales. So if we wanted to make those equal, we would have to double the number of hamburgers because that would make it equal to the number of hot dogs. All right, so if you think about it, if he sold 10 hot dogs, how many hamburgers did he sell? Well, he only sold five of them because he sold twice as many. But if we were to make it equal, we would have to double up the number of hamburgers. Okay, so that's how we get the proportion of the, the two variables correct. But it also says he sells at least twice as many hot dogs as hamburgers. So he could sell, he could for sure sell twi twice as much, like 10 versus 5, but he could sell more than that. So that means that the hot dog sales are going to be greater than or equal to the number of hamburger sales times 2. Okay, so that's one of the equations. And then the second equation is just a simple sales equation. So he is selling hot dogs for $2 each, so that's 2x. That's how the value of the hot dogs being sold, plus $3.50 times the number of hamburgers. So that's the value of the hamburgers being sold. And he expects the sales to be less than $1,200. So it could be equal to $1,200, but it has to be less than or equal to 1200 in this case. So there are our two equations here, number one, okay, and then number two, in terms of what we have to plot and graph. So how could we do this? Um, <clears throat> so an easy way to do this could be just to turn it into point slope form, or we could use a table of values. Um, so let, let's just look at a couple of ways in, in how we could plot this. So the first equation is I usually like to have the y's on the left side. So I'm just going to write this equation and not change anything. So it's going to be 2y moving to the left, but the 2y is, is pointing towards the less than side. So I have to make sure the sign is written that way um, is equal to or less than or equal to x. And then we're going to solve for y by dividing by 2. So it's going to be less than or equal to x over 2. Okay, so at this point, we could just do a simple data table, x and y. Um, let's put in 0 for x. And then this tells us y is going to be less than or equal to 0 divided by 2. So y would be 0. Um, let's use another easy number to work with here. Let's use 2. So if x is 2 y is going to be less than or equal to 2 divided by 2, which is 1. 
and then let's use another easy number to work with and let's try four. So X will be four and then four divided by two is two. So that gives us three points that we can plot easily on the graph. Um, the other equation here, let's do this in point slope form because we already have the Y's on one side. So we can write this equation as 3.5 Y um, is less than or equal to, now we need to move the 2x over, so we're just going to subtract 2x from both sides, so I'm just going to drag that over, and then plus 1200. All right, and then to point, put this in point slope form, um, we could then divide both sides by 3.5, okay, and we would have y is less than negative 2x over 3.5 plus 1200 over 3.5. So the problem with this equation is that it's not very easy for us to plot um, in terms of um, what we're looking for here. So um, we have our slope, which is negative 2 over 3.5 and then 1200 over 3.5. So that gets a little bit messy. So that might not be the best way to plot that because of the way that the numbers work out. So another thing that we could do is we could just say, um, what if we said um, x is equal to 0? Okay, what would y equal? And then what if we said, what if y is equal to zero? And then what would x equal? Okay, so we could work this out on, on scrap paper. Um, if you turn this out and you say x is equal to zero and then you solve for what y would be, um, it would be equal to 1200 divided by 3.5. So that's gonna be roughly 342.8. Okay, so that's one of our y coordinates. And then if y was equal to zero, we would have um, a value where it would be um, negative 1200 divided by two, we would actually have 600. So these are kind of large numbers to plot on the graph. So if we were going to do this, we'd have to carefully plot out our axis. Um, and remember, we, can't we don't really need negative numbers, so we could start with zero right here which could be zero. Um, along the X axis, we would have to go from zero to 600 if we wanted to get that point in. And then along the Y axis up to 400 or 350, 350-ish or so. And then we would have to plot the second equation also on that line. Um, and this one is gonna start at zero, zero, and then go up by two, one, and then four, two. So. Right now we see that the numbers, the scale is quite different for both of these equations. Okay, so this presents a little bit of a problem to, to graph. We could, we could estimate this probably fairly uh, reasonably. Um, you know, we could go back and look at putting in a bigger number here. So we could say, what if X was uh, 100? And then that means y is going to be 50. And then we could say x is 200. And then y is going to be equal to 100. Right? So in this case, now we can generate a few points. We could put 400 in and make that 200. And then now we've got something to work with. But we would still have to come up with a scale um, for our values here. So we could do, for example, here, um, we could mark out every four spots might be a hundred units. So that means every one is every four spots is 25 and go that way. So count four squares up one, two, three, four, put a tick, two, three, four, put a tick, two, three, four, put a tick, and then so on here. And then that'll give us something that we can approximate our values with. So we could say 200 on the X and then 100 on the Y, we could put a dot there. And then um, this is 100, 200, 300, 400. And you can see though, we're needing to get up to like 600 here. So we're not gonna quite make it, um, but we can plot the first two points here. So we can plot one of these lines here because it's gonna go like this. The other line here is X is gonna be zero and it's gonna be about 350. Let's round that to there. So this is 100, 200, 300. So about halfway it would be right there and then 600 would be over maybe about right here. Okay, so it's possible to do. Um, we'll just have to like draw our two, connect our two points together. Okay, and then where 
these two areas intersect is going to be what our equation is. So in the first one here, if y is less than um, x divided by 2, that means we're going to shade areas below the line. So let me just put a different color up here. We'll use pink for this, but this is this line right here. So we're going to shade all areas below it, pink. And then for the other equation, it's y is less than um, negative 2x over 3, 5. So I'll just put another color here and say that's green. That means we're going to be shading below the line here. Okay, and then the solution to this question is where do they intersect? So it's actually going to be, um, we'll put, make another dark blue color here. It's actually going to be this little triangle here where the two shapes overlap and, um, and intersect. So this is going to be the solution to this problem, okay, where we have the intersection of those two areas. And then the last question here is, could Sebastian have had sales of 420 hot dogs and 120 hamburgers? So 420 is right here, um, where I put this blue mark. And then 120 hamburgers um, is, the, remember, is the y-axis. It's going to be above right here. So the point that we're interested in is right there. So the question is, Okay, if we plotted 420 comma 120, okay, X and Y, hot, remember hot dogs, this is the hot dogs axis, okay, and then this is the hamburger axis, okay, this point is lying outside the region, so the answer is no, because this is outside the solution, okay, so the solution area. So could Sebastian have had sales? The answer is no, he could not, okay? Um, so this is one way that you can approach this question, but you can kind of see that as we work it out, you have to do a little bit of trial and error in terms of how we, we plot the values. And in one case, we could use a table of values, and then we found out that we needed some bigger numbers to work with. And then in the other question, we found out that putting it in point slope form is a little bit awkward to work with. So we could just figure it out by plotting two points where we have zero for X and zero for Y, and then calculate what the missing point is. And then get, get sort of an approximate um, scale for that. Okay, so that's one way that we could do this question. Um, the other way that I'm just gonna quickly show you here is another way that is a little bit faster, but we need to use a tool. So I'm going to switch over to a, uh, a tool here called Desmos, and I'm going to make a new blank graph. So this is a graphing tool that you can find online. Um, you just go to desmos.com, and you can do a search for it. And this allows you to type in the equations exactly as you see them. So if we remember what our first equation was, there's a little virtual keyboard here in this, this app. You can bring it up. I had x is greater than 2y. So I can type that in directly into the, the spaces that are provided and it will draw a graph for me right away. Now you can see this is the shape of the line with the shading that we did um, manually. Um, we're also including the negative values so we would just ignore that because we're only interested in the, the positive values. And then the other equation is 2x plus um, 3.5y is less than 1200. Okay, now because those numbers were bigger, um, the graph looks like it's covering everything, but we can use the zoom feature here, or I can just pinch it back, and then you can see that we do have the same kind of shape here. So we have uh, the, this other line going this way that's blue, and then the other one that's in red, and then where they overlap is what we're looking at here. Okay, and then the interesting thing about this tool, so I'm just gonna show more of it here, is that we can click at intersection points and actually get the data for what those coordinates are. So we can see they intersect at 320 and 160, at 00, zero and um, it crosses at 600, and that other point that we had up here was 0, um, 342.8. So this is a lot more precise in order for us to work with it. Okay, so this is a really cool tool, and it helps you do the math a little bit faster, so we don't have to take to worry about plotting the points, but you can get what the solution is looking like. And then if you look at it here, 
um, we, we could answer question 3e because we could just look at 420. So we know 420 is going to be 20, 40, 60, 80 is every tick mark is 20 and then we can go just over past 400 and then up to about 120 which is just past 100 on the x and then you can see our point is outside that shaded region also all right so that's how you can do these two questions um, this is a really cool graphing tool to use i suggest you use it for some of the other problems that you are you do in the rest of this unit it if you get the math equations correct um, it allows you to quickly plot and work out the solutions a lot more accurately than spending time um, working out the data tables or things like that. Okay, so hopefully that was a helpful uh, video for you to look at.